Lord Jesus, bless the eyes and ears of the listeners, and I plead the blood of Jesus on this lesson in the name of Jesus, and I come against every foul spirit that tries to get the people from not hearing God's word, Lord. In Jesus' name, I plead your blood on this in the name of Jesus. All right, we're going to go to Galatians. Write this down, chapter 5, verse 16 through 25, Titus 2, 11 through 15, walking in the spirit and standing in God's grace. Okay, you can pause the video. All right, I want to go over this with you before we start. You know, you wanted to know, some of you want to know some good um, ministries to um, support. And this is a couple of them. You can, you can look at, you can look it up. The Voice, the voice of the Martyrs and Tomorrow's World. These are great um, studying tools, okay, to help you along. Um, these are some that I support. So you support if you want to. These right here, you can look them up and they'll send you something for free and then you'll have your little stuff where you can support them. But this one is uh, means a lot to me right here because people, we in America, we have more freedom than anybody knows what to do with. Okay, we can stand on the street corner and yell, Jesus is Lord and be fine. Just be looked at like we're crazy, okay? But there's people all over the world that can't do that. Okay, so I want to show you the, the light, see the two colors, the lighter color, the darker color. So the lighter color, the lighter color, well, that didn't help. I'm trying to find some good light. The lighter color is countries that Christianity is allowed. This is just part of the world where Christianity is allowed, but they still get persecuted. The darker the color, the more the persecution. Okay, so like these countries right here, they allow it. But at the same time, you get heavily persecuted if they find you with the Bible or if you're talking about Jesus, okay? The darker colored places, you're not allowed to mention the name. You are not allowed to say the word Bible, let alone have one. They will decapitate you, hang you, blow you to smithereens, okay? Now, see, that's what Satan is trying to do. Even in your Christian life, even in your walk with God, especially in your walk with the Lord, he wants to cause so much division between you and God, separate you totally, so that you go to hell with him. That's what he wants you to do, okay? Because you, when you die, and you will, you're going up or down. You're going to heaven or hell. And that depends on if you're giving your heart to Jesus Christ, and that depends on do you live for him? Are you filled up with his word? Are you trying to be righteous? Are you living as holy as you can? And if you mess up and you will, you repent, okay? But Satan doesn't want you to do that. He wants you to go to hell and burn with him to separate you from your creator, okay? So these are the kind of people that you pray for. You know, don't ever forget these people. When you lay down at night, whenever you say your prayers, include the people that is suffering that wants a relationship with Jesus Christ that want the Lord, but they're suffering and being persecuted for it. Okay. So remember them. That's the second greatest commandment, y'all to love others as you love yourself and to reach out to the people. Okay. So let's go to Galatians chapter five, verse 16. Oh. I can't see here. Chapter 5, verse 16. So, it's talking about walking in spirit. Okay? So, I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the, for the flesh lust against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. Don't be your old self when you give your life to Jesus. Be a new person. So if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law because you're living according to God's will, His Word. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, adultery, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and things like that. Of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in the past, that those who practice these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. You will not. You must be a new creature in Jesus Christ. Okay? So, as a Christian, you are either going to walk in the Spirit or you're going to walk in the flesh. One of the two. You know, and if you choose, if you're doing that, not sure which side you're on, God said, I will vomit you out of my mouth. I will throw you up. It's worth nothing. So, 
you got to die to the old human nature, your old ways. So the evidences of living in the flesh are sins. Okay. So such as adultery, fornication, you know, a loose lifestyle, a loose tongue, adultery, sorcery, you know, occult practice, stuff like that. Um, losing your temper, self-centeredness, you know, envy, murder, drunkenness, drug taking, you know, stuff like that. So going on to 22, it says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control against which there is no law because you're living according to God's will. Okay. So being filled with the spirit calls us as much to character as it does to charismatic living. So the Holy Spirit's fruit is to be manifest in your life every bit as much as his gifts are to be shown through us. It's dangerous to give attention to the gifts of the Spirit without giving attention to the fruit of the Spirit. So if love is not the motivating force in your life as a believer, then the gifts are of no value. Okay, going on. And those who are in Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. It means you laid your old ways down. Okay, you're not still doing them. You cannot still do them. Okay, so if we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. It means if you're going to be in the spirit, then live it, live it. So if we have allowed our flesh or spiritually dead human nature to be crucified by the power of the Holy Spirit and live our lives being filled with the spirit of God, our spirit of God, um, our lives is going to produce love, joy, peace, long suffering, Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, which is the fruits of the Spirit. So it's only by being regularly filled with the Holy Spirit and living a life daily, love daily Bible study, daily prayer to God, you know, daily Christian fellowship, this kind of spiritual fruit can be produced in our life, okay? So I want to jump over to Second Titus, chapter 2. I'll write this stuff down. Um, we're going to read 11 through 15. So for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. Okay, what are they saying there? It's talking about the word soberly. You know, you know what that means. You know, be spirit filled. Don't be on drugs. Don't be drunk. You know, just be sober. In your right mind. So, um, looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our, of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from every laws, uh, deed, and purify for himself his own special people. Zealous for good works means you're happy to do the work of the Lord. You're happy to, okay? You need to do it, y'all. Speak these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one despise you, Okay? What's he saying there? Are you saying if we want to be truly, if we want to be truly God, godly people, our lives should exemplify self-control. But it's impossible to be truly self-controlled apart from the grace of God, since self-control is a fruit of the spirit, which I just went over with you. So a, a person who is self-controlled can, by the power of the Holy Spirit, within say no to ungodly behavior and worldly attitudes, and they can say yes to righteous and godly living, okay? It's important. So with God's grace at work within us, not only can we live godly, self-controlled lives, we will be eager to do it, okay? You'll want to. That's the thing. When you give your life to Jesus, you repent, and you believe you will want to do the will of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, so living for God also involves being humbly submitted and obedient to those in authority. Write that down. In government, in the family, in the church, and on the job. It involves being careful never to slander anyone. Okay, God keeps note of all that. Instead, speaking in a humble, peaceful, peaceable manner, considerate of others both in word and in deed. Okay, so in addition... As godly people, uh, we want to devote ourselves to doing good works. We know that Christ died in order that we might become a people cleansed of sin and zealous for good works. That's in verse 8, Titus 3, verse 8. So, finally, because we are God's chosen people, standing strong in his grace, we should lovingly but firmly 
Warn those who stir up arguments and cause divisions in the church. If they, if they do not heed a second warning, then avoid them. Assuring that the word and the message of God remain clear and pure in your own life. Okay, so you're going to run across people that's going to uh, be full of Satan and they're going to want to argue with you and stir up strife and they're trying to cause you problems. Okay, but that person, you know, and and don't hate that person. You know what I mean? No matter how demonic they are, you know, don't hate them because they are lost and they're facing a very grim, grim future okay and and it's, it's sad where they're heading to where they're heading to it's very sad it's very pit pitiful so don't read you know don't let it bother you but pray for them okay so avoid people who argue about the bible sound doctrine is important and all teaching preaching and prophecy should be judged in the light of the scripture okay if these verse in these verses which is three nine through ten Paul warned believers to avoid people who stir up arguments over foolish issues, okay? So there are people who hold on to an opinion that is not biblically sound, and they try to bring about division and strife. It's one of those that the Bible calls foolish people because they're being led by demonic spirits, okay? So they're foolish to let, their, let themselves be led by demons, and that's who's leading them. So we are not just, we are, stare, we are to stay clear of people who seek to break up the unity of the church by stirring up arguments and strife. But, you know, you still got to pray for those people because, listen, they're going to face judgment just like me and you are. They're going to face judgment. And Jesus is going to tell them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I never knew you. And do you know the hell that's going to be facing them? Seriously, their torment is going to be horrendous, okay? Horrendous. Like, say, for instance, you have somebody that's holding something against you, and they continue to come at you with persecutions and try to take you down, try to bring you down. Well, when I, I really believe when that person, if they don't change their ways, they don't get saved. When they go to hell, their torment is going to be you constantly on their mind, never ending, when you're going to be in heaven rejoicing, okay? So... Hell is not a place to, uh, it's not fun and games. So you got to pray for your enemies, but don't stick around them that just want to stick around and argue, 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 and try to stir up trouble. You know, the Bible says eventually crawl away from them because they're lost. Pray for them. You know, it's about all you can do. But go on with your walk because you have a glorious future. Okay, you've got something happy waiting for you. I do. You know, and I know what I got. Look, I know what I have ahead of me, okay? And I thank God and praise God for it. All right, so just remember that. And keep praying for the people. Keep praying for the people, okay? And look at that. Remember, this is what Satan's trying to do in your life. If you're a child of God, he wants to block out Jesus Christ. He wants that division between you and God. Because that's what he caused between him and God. And you are made in God's creation, and that's what he wants, division between you and the Lord Jesus Christ. But you have power as a child of God. You've got power over all demons, over all darkness. You know, just stick with the Bible. Stick with the Word of God, okay? And you will grow. The more you read, the more you study, the more you will grow, okay? You can't help but grow when you're studying the Word of God. You will grow, okay? And then you share, you share, because we're all called to be disciples, okay? You don't have to be in uh, a doctrine degree in Bible theology to witness. You witness for Jesus Christ, okay? So in Jesus' name, if you don't know Jesus, ask him to be your Savior, okay? If you have asked him and you have not changed your ways, it's time you take a look at yourself and you change your ways. Get in the Bible, Okay, be filled up with the fruits of the Spirit. You have to be. All right, in Jesus' name, thank you all for everything you're doing. Thank you for supporting my ministry. And thank you for your questions. And thank you for your prayers. And thank you for being here. And God bless each one of you. Anything else you need to know is in the description. God bless y'all.